Hello everyone, my name is Kelsey. I'm a member of the staff here at WCDPL. Today I will be showing you some acrylic pour paintings. So we'll be talking about two techniques today. I'll be walking you through that, what materials you'll need for acrylic pour painting. Um, and this is something really easy, a lot for beginners, something really easy that you can do um, with all ages, especially adults. Um, something super simple and super, super fun. So I do this in my free time. I am not a professional artist. Um, but we try our best and we keep going forward. So today I'll be walking you through two techniques. The first is going to be called a flip cup pour and the second will be called a dirty pour. So for your flip cup pour, you'll be um, creating something that looks a lot like this. So a lot of different lines, variations, um, something that's kind of on the messy side. And then for your dirty pour, um, you'll be creating kind of something that looks like this, depending on how you pour it. Um, this one I kind of poured in this direction, which you'll see a little bit later. Um, but these kind of have more specific lines, specific variations um, on color than your dirty pour does. So without further ado, we'll get started first on our flip cup pour and then our dirty pour. So the first thing you're gonna need for your acrylic pours, um, depending on if you're going to make your own acrylic pour material or if you're going to use store-bought. So I'll be walking you through both making your own and using store-bought with the two different techniques. So for our flip cup, we're gonna be making our own. So the first thing you're gonna need for your flip cup pour um, and making your own acrylic pour stuff is your pouring medium. So your pouring medium is gonna be your base, um, what goes into your cups first, and then you'll add the color onto that. So to make your actual colors, you'll need acrylic paint. Um, usually you're gonna need about a medium body acrylic paint, which is just kind of your normal acrylic paint. You can buy this in any craft store. Um, usually these are pretty cheap to buy. Um, your pouring medium, depending on what medium you get, is gonna be your expensive thing. Um, but again, your pouring medium is gonna be the thing that is most of your base in your cups. And then your acrylic paint, usually it's a two to one ratio. So your acrylic paint is gonna be your one and your pour medium is gonna be your two. So to start making your acrylic pour stuff, um, you'll need some cups. I use red solo cups um, and you're also going to need popsicle sticks. So again, you're going to follow the directions on whatever pour medium you have is. Usually, usually, as I said, it's a two to one ratio. Sometimes it's a tablespoon of acrylic paint to pour medium. Just follow the directions and whatever pour medium you get. Um, so you're gonna put your pour medium in first and then you're gonna put your paint in. And once you have both of those things in, you're gonna start stirring. Um, make sure you get to the bottom of the cup. Make sure all of the paint is well enveloped um, in that pour medium with your popsicle stick. And then once you are done stirring those, once you're done and you have all of your color set, you're gonna have, uh, you're just gonna wait for a minute um, to get those bubbles out of your paint. So you're gonna wait for about 10 minutes to get those bubbles out of your paint before you actually start pouring. So once you're ready to start pouring, grab just another empty cup, set that down. And then what my color scheme is here is you always have a base color, usually that's black or white, and then you have three to four other different colors. Um, you can also buy these metallic colors. Um, they come in like gold, silver, stuff like that, bronze. Um, but you'll want like three main base colors um, and then a, a black or a white, a solid color to go underneath all of that. And then once you put them in your cup, you're gonna go usually your base color and then whatever colors you want after that, or your darkest color to your lightest color, um, depending on what you want and what you want your painting to look like. Obviously for our flip cup pour, it's gonna be a little bit variated. It's gonna be a little bit um, more dirty than your dirty pour, if that makes sense, which you'll see in a minute. Um, so you're gonna start with your base color and then work your way through your colors depending on if you want them dark to light, depending on what kind of variation you want them in. So I'm just gonna do that now. Um, and then when we fill the cup, we'll get started on the flip cup pour. So as I start pouring, as I have my colors mixed and I wanna start building them in my cup, um, I wanna check the consistency before I do anything else. So when I check my consistency, I use my popsicle stick and I stir it around, not vigorously. You don't wanna cause any more air bubbles. So I'll just stir it around a bit and then I'll test it. Um, and what the consistency you're looking for is about melted honey-ish. Um, it's usually about syrup consistency. So you want something that's thin enough um, where it can kind of melt off that popsicle stick, but not thick enough where it's gonna clog on your canvas. So this looks good to me, so I will start pouring into my cups. 
And when you start pouring into your cups, depending on the canvas you have as well, um, you'll have to guesstimate kind of how much you're gonna put into your cup that'll flip on your canvas. Um, it's easier to guesstimate on your dirty pour because you're kind of pouring that on your canvas. Um, when we actually put our cup on this, flip it over, um, all of our paint inside of our cup is going to come out on this canvas for your flip cup technique. So I'm gonna fill this cup about halfway full because um, I feel like that'll cover, cover my canvas um, a too good extent. So as I'm pouring, you can also pour straight down. You can pour along the sides. Um, as I mentioned, you can go in any color variation that you want. Um, it's really up to you um, and do whatever feels best for you, whatever kind of color variation you want. Um, just kind of <laughs> acrylic pour gives you a lot of freedom in the things that you want to do and the things um, to get your painting just the way you want it. So it's really up to you. There are no rules in acrylic painting, we just paint. So now that I have my pour cup ready to go, I will set all of my colors off to the side. So they are out of my way, except for my base color. So my white is gonna stay here, because that's my base color. So for your flip cup, what you'll be doing is you're picking up your canvas, and then this is gonna get a little tricky. Sometimes, usually on your first try, um, you won't be able to feel kind of the slickness of my canvas. So I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it like this, put my cup on the bottom, set it on my canvas and flip it over and then put stay have your cup stay there you don't want to move your cup just yet just make sure it's securely on your canvas now you can also start at whatever point you'd like to start at if you'd like to start in the corner if you'd like to start in the middle whatever is best for you um, and then just make sure your hand is solid underneath when you flip um, your canvas and then make sure your canvas is resting securely on your heightened surface so your paint has some space to drip off. So now my cup has been flipped and all of this paint is going to come spilling out once I lift it. I'm just going to take a moment and use my base color along the sides of the painting where the cup is not. Um, so when I unveil my paint from the cup, it has room to spread and it has some leniency to spread through that paint. So you're just gonna want to um, kind of drizzle this around the edges of your canvas. Doesn't have to be perfect. Um, just so your paint has some space and some um, slip to spread. Okay, so looks good. I'll keep my base color where I can use it in case I need some, especially on the edges. Some people like to kind of spread this out. They use either use a paintbrush, a popsicle stick, um, whatever they like. You can also use a color. It doesn't matter a whole lot just to make sure your paint has some room to spread. Um, so I'm just gonna leave it as is because it, again, I just want some, some, some room for my paint to spread. And then I'm gonna take my cup from my canvas. And then that's gonna spill out. I'm just gonna sit here for a minute to let the rest of my paint from my cup drip onto my canvas. And the colors I have in here are like a rose, a plum, um, a gray, and then my white base color. And then once that's done for my cup, I'm gonna set my cup aside. And this is the fun part. So I'm gonna pick my canvas up, make sure it's away from your shirt and away from the ends of the table. Um, and then I'm gonna start to move my canvas. So my goal in moving my canvas is to get this all of the color to the outer sides, the outer edges. Now you can go fully one side, you can go you know, around in a circle, um, depending on what you wanna do. And you'll kind of figure out um, if your paint ratio is good in your cup, you'll figure that out pretty um, automatically depending on how much your paint is sliding off of your canvas. So if I just tilt it like this, you're gonna see that 
I did pretty well. My canvas is going to be pretty covered because my paint is slipping pretty quickly down that canvas. So I just wanna trace the lines of that white base color that I set out at the very beginning and then I want to bring it to the ends of that canvas. So even though I used um, maroon and rose and that gray, as you can see that gray is kind of um, muted in that pink. So you just never know what really what you're gonna get. Unless you pick some really, really strong colors, you never really know what you're gonna get. So I'll turn it this way. So you kind of get the ends of this. And see I'm slowing down quite a bit. So that means I'm kind of getting to the end of where my paint is gonna flow. So sometimes you just need to shake it a little bit um, and then we'll seal the edges. So if your ratio is a little bit off, as you can see with mine, I still have this canvas space here. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take the palm of my hand and then press it against the end of that acrylic paint to kind of drag it towards the edge. Now, if you have a lot of space like I do, um, sometimes this can cause your uh, design to be a little bit messed up. So you'll just wanna keep holding it to the side as you're pressing your palm to that edge so the paint can drip even further down. I'm just going to take my finger, since I have so much canvas left, and I'm just going to drag that paint down, just so it's marbled, just so it continues dripping down the side. So now that my canvas has been fully covered and I am sufficiently covered also in paint, um, we'll seal our sides. So what you'll want to do is take your hand, take your fingers, and then just run them along the sides of the canvas. So you kind of have those edges sealed. It'll look nice and pretty from all angles. So just run them along the sides. And then once that is done and you feel that this is sufficiently done, this is where I want it to look. I'm just gonna put it back on my heightened surface. And then this one is done. Um, so once this is done, you're gonna wanna leave it somewhere um, where it'll have time to dry for at least a few days. Um, usually two days is pretty good for these paintings just because the pour is pretty thick. Um, and once it is dry, you can also put um, a gloss or a, a top coat on it if you would like. Um, usually if you're going to hang them on walls, it doesn't really matter, but if you want um, a solid coat on that, if you want it really protected, if you want it to last for a long time, you can also put a top coat on that. So now that we have our flip cup pour done, we're gonna move on to our dirty pour. So for this one, I bought pre-made, uh, pre-mixed acrylic pour medium um, in a few different colors. You can, again, you can find this at any craft store um, and these are really easy and usually they're pretty cheap as well compared to the pouring medium and your uh, medium body acrylic paints. So in these, I have two purples, a blue, and then I think I'm gonna add a little bit of gold. So kind of the same method you had for your um, already made, you made yourself uh, acrylic pour, you're gonna do the same thing here. So you're gonna take your colors, um, you're going to order them in the order that you would like them to be in, um, and then you're just going to pour them into your cup. Again, you can do it on the sides, you can do it directly into the middle, um, whatever is best for you, that's what you're gonna do for your cup this time. So I'm gonna start with my darkest color first, and then I'm probably going to go with this purple, this blue, this lavender, and then just add in hints of gold um, as I go through my pour. And again, as you're pouring, you'll have to guesstimate the size of your canvas compared to um, how much pouring medium you have. Um, so for this one, I'm probably gonna fill up my cup about halfway full. So 
So now that I have all of my colors mixed, we're going to do the same thing that we did on our flip cup, which is to pour some paint around the edges and along your canvas to make sure your uh, cup has some slip. So with this one, as I said, you can use any basic color that you'd like. Um, I think I'm gonna go with lavender just because it's my lightest color. Um, this usually won't shine through as well as your pouring colors will. Um, so whatever color you use, it'll be a little bit, you know, shown on your canvas once you're done, but usually your cup colors are gonna be your most prominent colors. And this one, I'm just gonna go um, throughout my canvas. Since this one we're pouring directly onto the canvas um, and we won't need to have a little bit of room for that cup. Now this one you want to coat a little bit more heavily than you did um, your flip cup just because we're going to be pouring directly on it instead of creating that puddle of paint. So once I'm done with that I'll move my colors out of the way. And then I will take my cup and what you're going to do for your dirty pour is basically pour directly on your canvas in whatever way you want. So you can start from your corner and move down. You can go directly from the center. You can make circles, you can make squares, um, whatever pour you really wanna make. So what I like to do is start from my corner and work my way down um, because that'll give you a good ratio of paint to your canvas. Um, and it depends again, how much paint you're gonna have in here to stretch that across your canvas. So if you're going to go in a straight line, line like I am, um, you're going to want to kind of guess how much paint is in your ratio to how far along down your canvas you are. So if you run out of paint, say in the middle, um, you're gonna have a greater problem than if you were to run out of paint like 75% of the way down. So this is kind of a guessing game and something you'll have to feel your way, feel your way through um, the more you do acrylic pour painting. Um, so I'm just gonna start from my corner and work my way down and hopefully we'll get all the way down the canvas by the time my cup is finished. And you can make little circles as you pour. You can go in a straight line. Again, it just depends whatever you want to do. I'm going to make these little circles as I go. So I'm going to start making these little circles. Depending on how much paint I feel in my cup, I'm going to either slow or go a little bit faster. Um, I just want to finish by the time I get to the other corner. So I'm pretty much out of paint in my cup, which is good. And as you can see, those, those gradations of color. So I started with my dark blue and I worked my way up to my lavender. So my dark blue is gonna be here, my lavender is gonna be here. And as we did for our um, flip cup, we're going to pick up our canvas and we're gonna to start to move that paint. Now for these, I would usually start going to the opposite corners. So you're gonna have a much easier time doing that than you would um, going along the corners that you poured the paint in. So I'm gonna go to my upper corner first. And when it's almost there, I'm gonna flip and I'm gonna go to my opposite corner. covered. I'm going to try to get the rest of my paint to go to my empty corners. Again, if you need to shake it, just give it a little bit of shake. If it's not moving for you, again, take that palm of your hand, press it against that canvas, kind of drag that color forward. And sometimes if you just cannot get it to move, um, you'll need to just trace a finger along it um, or trace your palm along it just to kind of cover those edges of your canvas. Mine seems like it does not want to drip any longer. So I'm just gonna take my fingers and finish out my corners. Okay, so again, to seal in your edges, you'll take the palm of your hand or your fingers just trace it along those edges. And then once you're finished, you'll put it back onto your heightened surface. 
And again, you'll let that dry for at least two days before you touch it or move it or do anything. Um, you can gloss it up as same as the first one or just leave it as is and hang it on your wall. So thank you guys so much for joining us for this tutorial. Um, a materials list will be provided um, on our webpage on the event listing and also um, upstairs at the information services desk if you'd like to take part in this. This, again, this is a really easy, really fun thing to do, and I hope you guys enjoyed and were able to follow along. So thank you guys so much, and we hope to see you at the library soon.